ready? You lied to the whole world! Hell on Wheels is a western action drama that aired on AMC from 2011 to 2016 with five seasons and 57 episodes. Created by Joe and Tony Gayton and it follows the story of Cullen Bohannon, a former soldier and slaveholder who follows the track of a band of Union soldiers who are also the killers of his wife. This brings him to the middle of one of the biggest projects in U.S. history, the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. After the war years in the 1860s, this undertaking connected the prospering East with the still Wild West. Now for those of you that were hoping for a review over what actually did or didn't happen, I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. This review will strictly be covering if Hell on Wheels is worth sitting through all five seasons. However, I do think it's safe to say any scenes that have anything to do with building, talking about, or anything else that has anything to do with the Transcontinental Railroad in this is more than likely true. Western movies have been a thing since 1903 with Edwin S. Porter's first of many, The Great Train Robbery. So with a name like Hell on Wheels, knowing that a good majority of it takes place around trains, I think what that says is that this show knows its roots. But the main questions to ask about Hell on Wheels is, does it hold up? Is it worth watching all five seasons and is it a good Western film or story? The show is shot extremely well and definitely has a lot of beautiful locations all from the United Kingdom and Canada. And the show definitely has that grit to it along with an awesome score it also has one of the best intro songs I've ever heard. I'm not going to sit here and overhype this show because just like many other favorite shows of mine I understand that shows good or bad have downtime. What I mean by that is that Hell on Wheels is indeed a western, but that's not to say that the focus of this show is on shootouts and such. Although guns are drawn and people do meet their maker, a good majority of this show revolves around the drama, stuff that happens in between the good stuff. And there are times that it hits at home and delivers a very emotional or impacting arc in the story, but there are other times that I kind of found myself thinking, when's it going to get to the good stuff? All the performances are great, some are absolutely breathtaking, and I'll get to that a little later. But to answer your question as to if Hell on Wheels is worth sitting through all five seasons, or if it's even worth a rewatch, I'd have to say it depends on the person. Me personally, no. And there are a few reasons to that that are a bit spoilery, so here's your mild spoiler warning. But in my personal opinion, I found I lost interest after the episode titled Two Soldiers, which is luckily enough halfway through season five. However, like I said, a good majority of this show takes place around the Transcontinental Railroad, so I would think they would try to do as much as they could to get that part right in terms of actual U.S. history. So if you're a history buff and you love westerns, then who knows, this could be a favorite of yours. As for me, once Thor Gunderson was out of the picture, I was really just wanting an ending to be honest. This guy is freaking brilliant and does indeed, in my opinion, take the second place as for best villain in a television series. I'm sure you can guess my first. But Christopher Heyerdahl delivers a solid performance and really gave more to the meaning hell on wheels. There were plenty of times that I found myself wondering if he's actually the devil. Regardless, by far without a shadow of a doubt, the best thing about Hell on Wheels is Christopher Heyerdahl's portrayal of the extremely unique Thor Gunderson. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you've already gotten that far, and with only a few episodes left, you might as well finish it. And it's not awful by any means, there's just something I kind of expect from most successful TV shows. And that's to have a scene near the end, or even at the end, that has hints of the intro. Be it the intro song, or scenes that look similar to the scenes from the intro. Breaking Bad is a perfect example. So for those of you expecting some shootout between Bohannon and another surrounded by fire that lights up the night sky with a kick-ass western tune, sadly nothing of the sort happens. And I gotta say, although there isn't a case of a Dexter ending here, if you've seen Dexter you know what I'm talking about, it does end and it is enjoyable, just not exactly the go out with a bang kind of ending I was hoping for. Hell on Wheels is available on Netflix and AMC.com and for the most part is definitely worth the watch. Well that's all the time I have for now guys. One more quick thing, I realize I haven't been as frequent with my videos lately. And that's because I've been at a new job for a few months now and I'm just kind of trying to make a good first impression. Colin Bohannon would understand. But here in a few weeks, I'm moving. So not only do I have a lot of taking down and packing and unpacking and all that other sort of stuff to deal with, I've also got to make a new setup. But hopefully I'm not gone for too long, but until next time guys, 
hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Johnny Be Good with Johnny's Be Good Reviews, and let's hope the next movie or show will be good.